Hello and welcome to this special broadcast on uh, artificial intelligence and robotics. I am Arun Sharma. Well, uh, uh, the Global Artificial Intelligence Summit and Awards was organized in New Delhi in Vigyan Bhavan and the focus of GAISA or the Global Artificial Intelligence Summit and Awards was primarily on the fact that how can best practices can be shared uh, when it comes to this artificial intelligence ecosystem, the robotics uh, ecosystem and also for the next 25 years what is India's vision or what will be India's vision going forward in this Amrit Kal for the next 25 years. Well, the best practices uh, sharing and of course, uh, a clear vision on artificial uh, intelligence was a clear focus as far as this uh, GAISA or Global Artificial Intelligence Summit is concerned. But before uh, we try to explore as to what kind of best practices were shared, what kind of products were showcased as far as this artificial intelligence and robotics uh, is concerned, let's listen into uh, the Commerce and Industry Minister Piyush Goel, who is giving his vision as to how can artificial intelligence can change the world as far as Industry 4.0 is concerned. If India truly aspires to be a developed country by 2047, a commitment that I think the entire nation has taken on 15th August 2022, a few days back, when Prime Minister Modi articulated his five commitments, Paj Pran. The first was that we all have to collectively with a sense of duty, work towards making India a developed nation by 2047. And I can see artificial intelligence helping us in this journey, in this Amrit Kal, working our way up to take prosperity to every citizen of this country. So as we know this fact that artificial intelligence can contribute immensely uh, you know, in various sectors like healthcare, agriculture, gaming for that matter, financial sector for that matter. So we are right now in this exhibition. Let's try to explore as to how can this artificial intelligence, robotics can contribute immensely uh, uh, to the industry 4.0 and of course uh, you know, in various sectors as well. Well, so artificial intelligence can contribute immensely as far as financial sector is concerned. And we know this fact that today, when we talk about stock markets, cryptocurrency, there are various stock pundits giving their recommendations on the basis of fundamentals and technicals. But now the artificial intelligence is also entering this field of stock markets, whereby they can give suggestions, recommendations, portfolio management, uh, depending upon their technical analysis and fundamental analysis. Well, this is kind of a game that the company called Jarvis has designed, that uh, the kind of stock markets you can pick up and you can leave on the basis of uh, uh, the, uh, the the fundamentals and technicals, uh, be it uh, BPCL, be it uh, Bajaj Holdings, be it Bajaj Finance, be it Bajaj fin FinServ. So various companies, whether to invest, whether to not, uh, how does AI plays an important role? To talk more on that, I am joined by Ashwin from uh, the Jarvis. So first of all, how does this AI works uh, uh, when it comes to stock markets, investment aspect as well? So in, uh, in Jarvis, what we do is we use artificial intelligence to recommend stock portfolio uh, for the stocks which are listed on the NSC. So there is a universe of 2000 stocks on the NSC. So based on the fundamental analysis done by the Jarvis and the risk profiling customization of the uh, client's risk profiling, everything we recommend the stock portfolio to uh, the client. Now there is no human emotions or any bias or partiality included in this because in a traditional form of the investment, we have uh, uh, where, where there is a, a lot of uh, human emotions are involved but in AI is a machine so it does not have any human emotions and it recommends stocks which are basically uh, going to perform well in the next say, 45 60 days wherein there is an opportunity to make better money compared to the traditional form of investments. Okay. So does this also give calls on options, futures and how does it predict about various news that are happening? Uh, does this track uh, that as well? So we are only focusing on equities right now. We do not have any recommendations for FNO or commodities or bullion market. So and what it does is does the handholding of the uh, investor. So it's not just that the recommendation is done, but the uh, AI also tells you when to book profit, when to exit from a particular stock, when to do some position sizing. So all these recommendations are done by the AI. So there is no human emotions involved in it. So after financial sector and AI in financial sector, you know, the first thing that comes to mind that uh, AI means robotics, AI means humanoid. So yes, uh, right behind me uh, is a robot. 
uh, its name is uh, echo let's talk to dr praveen uh, from compoint uh, uh, dr praveen thank you so much for talking us uh, uh, and uh, first of all let's try to understand it how this robot primarily if we can give some demo that how it primarily can help as far as industry 4.0 is concerned restaurants are concerned medical field is concerned yeah see robo can be a boon for the hospitals can be a boon for the even the small shops also for the jewelry shops also fine it can be a boon uh, for the cafes and the restaurants also i will say echo hello now it is greeting the client so basically it is a fun for the children and it is a fun for the clients also fine echo move forward okay moving forward anything if you want any uh, any kind of queries if you have got it's going to respond to each and everything primarily when we talk about the ai the robots primarily this is how they follow the commands and primarily is uh, the workload of human beings so this is this is the way how primarily these kind of robots can contribute immensely as far as restaurants are concerned as far as healthcare industry is concerned we have seen that how in the, during the covid pandemic time these kinds of robots have played a significant role in serving the patient during the covid pandemic time Well, we have seen that how AI is changing the way you know we uh, are treating our problems. We are finding uh, you know uh, solutions to our problems, be it the financial sector, be it the hotel industry, tourism industry, hospitality sector. But when it comes to the education, uh, there are two aspects to it. So you know we have to train the, uh, the, the the this generation so that they can contribute when it comes to AI and robotics. And also, how can the uh, you know AI change the way education is happening? To talk more on that, I am joined by Deepak, who is the uh, CEO and co-founder of. Gold Champ Technologies, Deepak. Thank you so much for joining us. So, primarily, how is AI going to change the education sector? Uh, sir, India is automa automated, uh, automated country, and uh, this word is robotics. So, we have to bring the technology in schools in ed tech sector. So, we have the do it yourself kits in the every field that is like uh, uh, sustainable goals in uh, India. So, like agriculture. so in the agriculture field we are providing the diy kits and out of that box students are making this stick so uh, this stick can go to the farmers and they can check uh, their uh, turbidity uh, ph humidity temperature uh, in their uh, lands this stick is a kind of a magical stick primarily for the agriculture sector for the farmers primarily because this is going to help them you know to know or to you know, to explore various uh, things that happens in the farmland this primary stick helps to check the soil uh, the, the water level and what kind of weather uh, 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 temperature is required for the soil or the crops so this kind of stick helps so this is a diy kit and of course uh, students can also develop this and the cost of this uh, product is less than 1000 all right so less than 1000 rupees so this this stick primarily is on one side going to play an important role in educating the uh, children and also to the agriculture sector and of course the farmers as well we have with us uh, raghavendra here who is again and from the the core chem technologies so ragvendra what do you have as far as the education sector is concerned so sir as you know ai is going to be a cutting edge technology and it will be really wonderful to allow young kids to understand the tech vocabulary first the ai vocabulary learn how to deploy ai and eventually create their own products so how about consumer to creator mindset i'll give you a quick uh, example let's say you're a farmer you have good apples and rotten apples otherwise manually people go and sort it out street dog feeder let's say a dog comes you feed them a different amount of food then you have other wonderful uh, systems like helmet detector if someone is not wearing a helmet no need of a traffic police for rigorous check ai will automatically do the chalan okay. so we have got projects like this and we we want the kids to actually have an experience of these things and start creating so the goal here is to start, uh, convert india from a consumer to a creator mindset okay. so this kind of innovation that means primarily uh, this initially uh, will introduce the kids to the radar systems or detection of various colors and gradually they can graduate uh, to making some kits that primarily can detect people who are not wearing helmets or primarily making uh, something uh, how to differentiate between human beings and the pets or the animals I have some more thing over here 
which can you know display a, a kind of 3D printers and of course how to uh, you know uh, we have all seen a shakalaka boom boom kind of a thing whereby you draw things and it becomes a reality. So same kind of pen is here whereby you know uh, 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 Deepak is going to draw something and it becomes into reality via 3D printers. So Deepak, aap kya ja rahe? what are you going to make now? So, we can make any kind of 3D model like we have uh, made a, uh, a 3D model of Durga Mata. So they can just draw like a circle like a boom boom pencil and uh, it will convert to, to the 3D model. So you can you can uh, print out of whatever you make. So uh, we have uh, this, uh, uh, you know, uh, idol of uh, Ma Durga, which has been printed here. Various, you know, uh, things or, you know, uh, materials can be printed in this 3D printers and this 3D printers can print the kind of thing you have drawn on the paper. So AI is useful in various sectors, be it agriculture, healthcare, education, and also one important aspect is smart cities. Well, government has committed to you know uh, to go ahead or to to develop hundred smart cities in our country. And how these smart cities uh, you know uh, can be uh, you know uh, constructed or developed, and you know various technologies are being you know tried and tested. Various technologies are being used on pilot basis. So I have something right now is uh, what we know know as a smart cow company, and I have uh, uh, Gautam with me. Uh, let's try to understand that this how this product primarily can contribute immensely when it comes to smart cities in our country as far as the clean initiatives or the environmental aspect uh, Gautam first of all thank you so much for talking to DD India uh, uh, first of all uh, what is this product all about you know how it is different from the current products and how it can contribute in smart cities and of course the environmental aspect as well uh, you know thank you for uh, you know having me here and uh, as uh, you know I, I just wanted to let the viewers know this is one of our end-to-end uh, -end A engineering product, uh, you know, uh, aimed at the smart cities. Now, how is this particular product different from what is there in a smart city junctions today? So typically, any city junction have CCTV cameras installed there, where the video feed just gets back to the control room, and it's a static video feed. Nothing, uh, uh, you know, it's going to do on its own. So what we've done to do is an end-to-end -end solution. You see, there is this, uh, you know, particular product with four cameras these cameras can be basically you know set it up in a way where they can cover 360 degree fov means you can cover entire junction with one of this device you can see these little antennas basically they can connect over wi-fi or they can connect over ethernet uh, with internet okay now how is this different you see there are these cameras and along with the cameras if you see inside there is a piece of AI hardware inside it's based uh, out of nvidia you know nx uh, you know jetson family hardware what we have done is we've connected these cameras to this particular AI hardware, you can load any intelligent traffic management system hardware onto that uh, you know particular hardware. What does it do basically? It just makes life of the city administrators very easy. Once you load the model, it has three four capabilities you know which which it can add value to. One, it can do NPR and OCR. What is NPR? Number plate recognition. Simply reading the number plates of every vehicle passing through the junction. Two, OCR. What is OCR? Object classification and recognition. It not only reads the number plate, it determines what is the type of this vehicle. Whether it is a bus, truck, motorcycle, auto rickshaw, and uh, you know the attributes as well. Which model, which make. Now, how is it important for for uh, enforcement agencies or the administrators? They can have a holistic view of the entire traffic, uh, you know, flow at a particular junction at any given point. Now, you can see that you know there are a certain environmental air quality measurement sensors installed at this part of the uh, you know product what does it do basically it measures air quality uh, parameters like pm10 pm2.5 co and no stuff like that now why is that important basically it can correlate the pollution levels at a particular junction with the volume and the density of the traffic that you have and it, it aids the decision makers in in taking a call whether as to reorganize the traffic flow or whether we need to take institutional measures to you know uh, uh, encourage people to take public transport so on and so forth because it, it just gives you a picture if this is how things are going to go this is how your pollution is going to travel and most importantly when you deal with any you know smart city initiatives the, the biggest thing is the complexity in execution so if, if you want to go for a sol solution like this in a normal environment cameras is supplied by one guy a hardware is supplied by another guy 
integration has to be done by another guy and there is a cloud provider when your data needs to flow residually but this is one system which is end to end and which can give you alerts on a real time basis thus solving many problems of the smart cities all right so in order to give a major push to the smart cities uh, the smart car or the solutions provided by smart car uh, can play an important role and the various startups entrepreneurs that are working on this mission of making smart cities contributing to smart cities and of course keeping in the mind the environmental aspect because we know this fact that prime minister narendra modi has committed or india has committed primarily on international platform that by 2070 india needs to be carbon neutral and in that direction these innovations or these kind of innovations going to play an important role going forward Because well, so the artificial intelligence, robotics is something that every youngster is looking forward to. You know, and IQ is playing an important role in ensuring that how can best practices can be shared, how can these kind of summit play an important role in giving a major push to the startups and innovators in our country related to the AI or the robotics sector. Uh, to talk more on that, I am joined by uh, Mr. Raj Kumar Sharma, who is the president of IQ. Uh, thank you so much for uh, joining us on Doordarshan. First of all. You know, uh, where Prime Minister Narendra Modi has talked about the next 25 years by 2047, India should become, you know, a, a developed country. So, how can AI, the artificial intelligence, can contribute immensely when it comes to Industry 4.0 and various other sectors? So, how does uh, you know AI uh, uh, can, can contribute in that direction? Okay, see, technology is the only way which can lead us and ensure uh, to achieve that vision of the of our respected Prime Minister. if you see all the industries put together whether agriculture healthcare or aviation any industry we have a traditional approach of doing some way right so once you start utilizing the data utilizing a different methodology utilizing the dif uh, different applications of artificial intelligence probably you can increase the productivity you can improve the uh, improve your life also right it will actually better your life and overall uh, uh, the whatever we plan uh, to achieve the numbers right so these technology will make a difference what icra is doing uh, we are actually uh, uh, collecting the database from all these uh, sectors we have formed one steering committees specific to uh, this particular industries and uh, these committees would be uh, uh, it is uh, the, the the kind of uh, members those who are from the government institutions from the researchers industry academia and startups all put together they all will be sitting they all will be deciding what all area the concerns are there how the solutions can be developed through using the uh, artificial intelligence and we can utilize that and how we can increase the awareness uh, within the country so that people should start understanding the importance of the technology and we can take it further and uh, in a normal processes so where does uh, india stand as of now when we talk about ai what sort of best practices can we learn from other developed countries when it comes to ai and do you think there is a need for a global uh, integrated approach when it comes to ai uh, because uh, it is said that science is a good servant but the bad master so how do you look at it that way so i'll say yes we are very late but i'm pretty sure we will pick up very fast and we'll lead the you know this uh, journey and uh, when you say um, like uh, artificial intelligence we have to develop a workforce first of all for that so that they can learn they they should be ready for the future kind of a roles and second there are two different aspect one whatever the platforms are ready like there are leading companies using like google or facebook and all so we can utilize those uh, platforms to learn right to make the people skilled about it but it is not necessary that we would be using the same platform we should be focusing more upon the indigenization that is more important if we see like in china probably they are they are completely cut off from the rest of the world they are developing their own things right so similarly these things can be done in india as well if we start building that ecosystem where in tech startup companies and uh, new entrepreneurs they start uh, getting these uh, kind of uh, uh, support system uh, whatever the government is giving or the private institutions like icra is giving so they will start using that and they will make sure things to happen further and we can move on to the completely indigenization of the artificial intelligence because one more important thing is like this inter the security of the country because we, if we use others platform are in obviously our uh, security will be under threat right so this is how we should be focusing on this direction my last question to you that when we talk about next 25 years 
or what is the goal that ICRA is looking at? What sort of uh, uh, commitments or big, uh, you know, uh, 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 commitments uh, ICRA is looking to fulfill when it comes to achieving some milestone when it comes to artificial intelligence and robotics? First of all, we are engaging all stakeholders in this journey uh, because obviously government major uh, stakeholder they should, they needed a kind of you know a guidance or mentorship how these things can be done so we have engaged uh, industry people as well as researchers also right so these teams will be helping this to you know achieve our mission this is the only way we are actually a kind of a catalyst we are creating a system wherein all, all people are coming on the same, plat same platform and everybody can be uh, can get the benefit out of it so this is the plan i cry just building the support system we are not the researchers but we are engaging companies who are the master in the domain experts they should be come and we are actually bridging the gap like today you have seen ai in defense we have just started with a huge gap like normal uh, tech startup or small like small entrepreneurs they don't have any access to the defense so we have actually bridged that gap all the general manager the, sorry uh, in the left wing general level rank of people or the senior officials of the defense they are here so they are trying to connect with the new entrepreneurs and we would be having further round table meetings also in this session so they will uh, put their own requirement suppose from the defense side they they might be thinking some requirement is there but they don't know how these requirements can be fulfilled by using the technologies so they will be putting the requirement and all startup they would be trying to give the solutions and some kind of research and development unit will also be set up so that is how we can start bridging the things and wherein icra is actually playing the major role all right thank you so much for talking to us so icra is playing a significant role when it comes to you know contributing in ai and making an ecosystem uh, related to ai and robotics Artificial intelligence and robotics uh, have immense potential when it comes to giving a major push to industry 4.0. Well, the startups in our country, the innovators in our country are also playing a significant role in giving a major push to uh, the artificial intelligence and robotics ecosystem going forward. Well, uh, the exhibition showcases various innovators showcasing their products and of course, uh, the best practices can also be shared when it comes to exhibitions like this. Well, so this was a special broadcast on artificial intelligence and robotics. Thank you for joining me. Namaskar.